Yeah. So, hi. Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Going. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. We are at NYC Camp 2014, which is taking place at the United Nations, which I've, it's an incredibly exciting venue. How does it feel for you to be sort of in the corridors of power? It's quite, it's, it's quite an experience. I've never been in, in uh, a country within a country or a nation within a country before. Yeah, same here. I've never even been inside an embassy, so it's, it's quite interesting that we're actually not on U.S. soil right now. Yeah, we got this whole briefing about how you're no longer in the United States, there's all these different rules. Yeah. Plus, it's actually fascinating just to go to the cafeteria and see pe people, I guess, from everywhere, every mm -hmm. different kind of ethnic dress, um, so many languages going on. Yeah. Plus, for me to be, as an open source person, to be in a place that is, has been fundamental to knowledge sharing and trying to make the world a better place, um, It's a, it's a pretty inspiring environment to, f for us, right? Yeah, I think it's a great fit. So this is Scott Reeves. He works for Digital Echidna in London, Ontario. This is Roel Pité yeah. from Vancouver, Canada. He's a PHP freelancer. They have been hugely helpful, and thank you for your contributions. You're welcome. To getting the Drupal 8 theming layer ready. So I think the most significant part of that is Twig, right? Would one of you like to explain what Twig is? Well, um, Twig is a templating language, uh, a templating system similar to your Smarty or your uh, uh, the, other, <laughs> the other bunch of them that are out there. Um, it was based off of, um, uh, of the syntax that was made for uh, Python, it's called Jinja, which is like ninja with a J. Um, and it was, yeah, it was kind of conceived from that, but then extended and, and made uh, probably one of the fastest ones as well as one of the most extensible ones that they, they have. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think I think the story was was that uh, Fabien Potentier, the, the creator of the Symphony framework, which of course Drupal 8 uses a lot of Symphony components. He actually, I think he actually found Twig and sort of said, oh, I kind of like this, but I kind of want to tweak it a little bit. So I think he, the, the story is he actually took this over from someone else a number of years ago. Right, so the big story in the Drupal community for the last couple of years has been the adoption of other t open source technologies to integrate them with Drupal to make all of the projects better. And uh, Larry, it all, you know, the public kind of kickoff was Larry Garfield's blog post about getting off the island. And we've got a bunch of Symphony 2 components, all sorts of other interesting libraries. Twig is maintained by Sensio Labs, mm -hmm. the Symphony 2 company, and by Fabien Potentier. Um, do you know how the decision came that we were also going to adopt Twig along with all this other stuff that we've taken? When did the decision happen to drop PHP template, for example? I believe it was at a bad camp in 2012, if I'm not incorrect on that. Um, and it was a, just a discussion on a, a, all the different template uh, languages that are out there and which ones are faster, which ones uh, have more features, um, which ones have less features, so maybe we can have them smaller. Um, and kind of ironing that out in a big discussion, kind of roundtable, boff type discussion. And, That's what I remember I think, them talking about. Yeah, I think, I think in Bad Camp 2012 um, was the initial actually commit by Dries of, of the Twig integration with Core. So I'm, I, I believe there was discussion before that. There was, there was definitely other explorations. Um, there was some work that was done into a, a still PHP-based kind of token, tokenized, so that, but it would, we would still be very much on our own island of we have our own new token system and here you have to learn this now. Do you know if it played any role in the discussion that it is maintained by the same, same people who maintain the Symphony 2 framework? I, I know I've heard a lot of people sort of explain that we don't have Twig because we have Symphony. It's more that we have Twig because it's awesome. 
and Twig is actually kind of it has its own documentation, its own website. It's 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 a separate project. It's a separate project from yeah. Symphony. Symphony uses it, and as well as lots of other. Uh, there's at least three other CMSs that I know of, but there's a, a wide variety of frameworks that allow you to integrate it. Like your Laravel has uh, an extension that I know some people, uh, a Drupal people in Vancouver, are actually experimenting with some Laravel stuff, and they're also using Twig with Laravel. And that's not the native templating language for Laravel, mm -hmm. and so they're using it there too, just because. Drupal is going to be using it, so they wanted to use Twig, but they also wanted to use a framework instead of a, a, a CMS. There's so much convergence going on in the PHP world. There's so much fresh cooperation, and and you know the Composer standard, for example, just gives us so many incredible opportunities to work together now. Absolutely, and I know that there's been a little bit of actually the Drupal project contributing, you know, pull requests back to Twig, so. There, there is. We're already getting into that that commingling of the two projects a little bit, you know. So, it's really, it's really promising to the future and what we can do together. So Drupal eight has adopted this templating system because there are a lot of advantages to using it. Right. Uh, one advantage is not homegrown, so we don't have to maintain the whole thing. Can you talk about how it might improve? Your work at your digital agency as a you're a, actually a backend developer, right? That's right. Uh, well, a lot of the work I do in my day job, uh, a decent portion enough, is is actually sort of bridging the gap between the backend and the front end, and I think Twig really helps us there because it actually brings more power to both. Uh, front end people who don't want to learn PHP can look at something that looks a lot more like HTML. It looks like more what they know. It's it's one less thing they need to learn because front end developers already have to know a lot. You know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all these different what do, what these different browsers do with these different things. So it gives a lot more power to front end developers, and it also gives some really cool power and toys to back end developers because Twig's very extensible, and we're, we've been very careful integrating Twig into Drupal to not do anything that people who already know Twig, that it would mess them up. So we're basically, we're adding a few Drupal specific things to Twig, but that's about it. So we're trying not to change the experience too much. That's great. I wasn't actually aware that it really empowered backend developers too. A lot of people come in and they're skeptical and they say, oh, well, what if I need to do this in the template? Well, you still can. I mean. I think it's really important. I, Twig, gives, Twig gives us a really nice separation of concerns where your template should basically only have, I mean, this is debatable, but your template should basically only have display logic. Logic is perfectly fine to have in a template, but it should be basically display logic. Um, now, and backend developers might sort of, sort of say, oh, well, I, now I don't have access to all of my PHP functionality within this template. What am I going to do? Well, there's still a number of tools. Like in Drupal, you still have the whole pre-process layer. If you need to prepare some sort of variable or output to a template, you can still do that 100% in PHP. And then there's a lot of cases where you might want to actually provide some sort of functionality to your front-end developers and give them some kind of tool that they can use day to day. Uh, we did a Twig training here on Thursday, and someone had a great idea. One of our trainees had a great idea, and he said, in, in Twig, we have the concept of filters. So you can spit out a variable into your Twig template, and it's, it's almost like Unix pipes. So you pipe that through a filter, and you could, for example, make it all caps, or all lowercase, or title case. Wow. Or do date formatting. And you can chain multiple, right? So given that, what this trainee suggested is, hey, uh, in Drupal, we have these, these PHP functions for making CSS class names. So, and it, it ensures that they're unique, ensures that they're valid, all these things. Why don't we make a twig filter that you could spit out a variable and make it into a CSS class? So, you know, the, the backend developer can come in and say, oh, I can make that for you. Wow, okay, and, right, all the consequences of this choice were just, we don't even know how good we've got it yet, right? This is just, That's right. we're just starting to figure this out. Um, there is at least one really obvious and perhaps paramount, of, of paramount importance, right, is the discussions around the security of the theming layer. 
Yes, and with the, the setup that we have right now, it's uh, just kind of almost vanilla um, uh, twig. And with vanilla twig, you have no PHP scripts can be run in there. You can't make database calls. You can't um, you, you can't run uh, scripts against the file system. So you can't write scripts like that in core right now. And so your theme layer templates are safer just because of that. We're also looking at doing auto escaping uh, by default, and we're kind of debating whether or not um, that's a better bet than what we have right now. Um, it's like it, it's there, and we want to turn it on, so we're going to try to turn it on. And that would be an interesting one too. So that means that the X XSS uh, security holes could be um, kind of mitigated by always escaping everything that comes in, and then marking things as safe when they when they uh, when they are indeed safe, and they're they're the markup that you want to see. So I see a lot of benefit for uh, hosting providers and companies who do um, multi-tenant server architectures for, for their clients, right? Yes, uh, you, you could actually provide a, a template to, um, to, your, uh, to your site builder, uh, allow them to edit the template possibly. Uh, in PHP, uh, sorry, in Drupal 7 and 6, I think there's a, a module called Contemplate, which opened up mm -hmm. a whole bunch of security holes. Yes. You could actually make Contemplate yes. a real thing and not have the security holes with Twig. Yeah, uh, because one of the things uh, Twig has is this concept of sandboxing, where it can actually evaluate its own template and tell you, you know, whether it's valid or not, for example, or whether there's syntax errors. Wow. Which with Contemplate, if, if you have a syntax error, you could we'll probably break your whole site. White screen of death. Yeah. yeah. I've never <laughs> used it myself, but that's what I hear. <laughs> I turned it on once and I got yelled at. So. <laughs> that was a very long time ago. <laughs> um, wow, we're in this great time of, of PHP convergence. Mm. How much have you been actor, uh, how much have you been getting to know, getting to interact with with other PHP communities? What do you think about the possibilities that we're we're gaining with all this interaction? Well, I know if I have a Twig question, I sometimes I can't ask anybody in the Drupal community, so I will jump on a different IRC channel and I'll be talking directly to the people from uh, Sensio on their channel just to make sure that I can uh, gauge. And it was actually about the autocomplete stuff. I wanted to gauge whether or not it's a good idea to even turn on autoscaping by default. So I go and talk to the guys over there because they built it. And, it's uh, they nice to talk it. to them, yeah. yeah. And other people that have used it in other frameworks, I got to talk to some of them too. Ask so, them those kind of questions. So, so, so Drupalists are getting a, a friendly reception out in the oh, out yeah. in the trenches. They're really happy that we're using their 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 tools, and um, yeah, so they're quite happy about that. So they're happy to help as well. Yeah. Um, so. And uh, we've actually seen some of them uh, show up in uh, Drupal uh, Drupal issue queue as well to provide some patches or give mm -hmm. some help. Uh, we, we go out and seek some of that help sometimes, and sometimes it would just show up in their hands. I know that Sensio Labs UK donated a bunch of time to get Twig into Drupal 8. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We did have we did have help from a number of uh, Sensio Labs, and I remember them fondly. Sensio Labs folks, and yeah. Yeah, it's nice. I, at some, I've seen Symphony people at almost every Drupal event I've been to in the last six months, and I went to two fantastic symphony events, and there were Drupalists infiltrating there as well. Yes, yeah, it's nice to see the cross-pollination that's happening. Yeah, I think we're making new friends, Yeah. right? And I think that um, large communities of smart people can do amazing things, and even larger communities, I guess we could do more, right? Yes, well said. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It's really great. And thank you for all your work on Drupal 8 and on all this stuff. It's really, really cool. Great. Thanks. Thanks.